News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. Tracking Dorian, this Category 5 storm about to slam the Abaco Islands in the Bahamas. The hurricane now packing winds of 160 miles per hour. Dorian, capable of catastrophic damage, it is going to stall for a bit over the Bahamas and it could linger for 24 hours. Good morning, appreciate you joining us. Yeah, the 8 a.m. advisory shows Dorian packing winds now of 160 miles an hour. The storm is dangerous, potentially deadly. For our area, tropical storm warnings are now in effect for parts of Florida's east coast. That means conditions are expected within 36 hours. News for Jax has reporters up and down the east coast and inland where crews are getting ready to deal with the potential impact of this powerful storm. We won't know its impact on us until after it moves across the Bahamas. Whether or not it's going to make that turn, Rich is following its progress. Rich. And, and it's the effects here that, you know, we're basing it on some historic tracks, knowing what happened with Matthew, knowing what happened with Floyd. And this is sort of in between the two, and it's near the similar uh, intensity as it continues to weaken as it moves by once it passes just to the north here of Brevard County and gets off of coastal Georgia. But we've got to go through the threes, down to the twos, continue to weaken, and eventually even be coming, as you see there, that category one as it's a little bit closer to Wilmington. But the concerning factors here, especially when we're talking about the uh, Bahamas, so here we are at a category five, just moving over the Abacos, and then you have category four. This is Monday at 2 a.m., and here's Tuesday at 2 a.m. And let me do this. I'm going to go in just a little bit closer with these two so you can see that the gap between these two, uh, let's, so you got the Big Island, you got Nassau, so we're getting up into the northern tip here. This is a distance of not even the size of the hurricane here. Maybe we're talking, oh, uh, say 50 nautical miles or so in that spread of going between the two days, between Monday and Tuesday especially. This is where this thing, for about 24 hours, you might as well call it near stationary. And at this point, there's a couple of other pressure systems that are working that may cause that force of a turn to the north and then north, first at northwest and then northeast. And that's what we want to eventually see. And of course, we'd love to see it a lot sooner than being depicted here in any of the models. And what we have seen over the last couple of runs has been a slight shift to the east for the southern portion of the track. The northern portion is just about what we've had uh, for three or four model runs now, keeping it within a pretty tight line as they continue to overlap. But just knowing the two point, uh, was almost $3 million worth, or $3 billion rather, uh, million dollars worth of damage. Originally, I think it was 1.9, and then it was up to 2.8 uh, million here for Matthew. And then Floyd, as far as overall, it was about a $50 million price tag based on its year. Uh, and it left the areas around Jacksonville, as Stacy, you'll remember, uh, minus a pier and with damage that was along the coastal zones. And that was roughly locally in Duval, about a million dollars. So if you split the difference between those two, you could see that we're still talking what could be a lot of damage, uh, especially infrastructure wise and um, just erosion and everything here that we could see along the beaches or I would even open that up to even some tropical storm wind damage that may be possible all the way back to about Highway 301 based on its current path more specifically that 95 corridor and to the beaches. We'll pick the story up here and of course we'll have your Sunday forecast as we get you ready for for some folks a couple of days to get ready for the arrival of Dorian. Back to you. Boy seeing that track makes you certainly nervous Richard but let's go back to the Bahamas now because they are expecting the storm to hit here pretty soon. Right now it looks really nice, but when we talk about that storm lingering over the Bahamas for 24 hours, what kind of damage, what kind of rainfall are we looking at? So just look at that image there. So if, if the There's camera- There's the Atlantis, right? So, right there? Yeah, so you see the Atlantis in the back, you see the bridges. There was a three-story building that just went by if you count the windows at everything else that you're seeing there, there's one story, there's two stories, there's another, you know. So those act, those buildings that we're seeing are actually fairly newer in some cases compared to um, old Abacos and old Bahamas um, where a lot of stuff used to be flat roof. That's starting to look a lot like the tropics there as you see the uh, rain in those uh, clouds in the distance. So what are they expecting? As far as rainfall rates, the potential for very heavy rainfall and localized flooding in some cases surpass, uh, so look at, on average in some of these areas is going to be 12 to 24 inches with areas that could exceed that into the 30 inch mark. This is 24 hours of category five, possibly category four, if it weakens a little bit uh, of rainfall coming through. And then look how flat all of flat. that, 
That's into what I was a coastal thinking. area looked. Yeah. When that surge comes in, and we're talking on the worst case, 20 feet above the normal high tide, 20 feet. So this isn't just a wave that's coming through. This is where the water level continues to increase. And so not specifically to this area, but uh, areas that will be around, whether it's the Big Island or, or whatnot, all of that surge is going to come through. And you can see just how little there is here between where the water ends and then you get into sort of this little flat land, this little grassy area before your tree lined area. And Atlantis, and imagine that here through these neighborhoods, 20 feet, so one, two, three, Gosh. and based on current code, even if these were old code and they were eight foot, that's still going to be 20, was that um, eight times three, so 24, um, they're about inches, or 24 feet rather. So if the storm surge was at its max, that could still come through up to what would be that third story window here based on this old building and all of these um, uh, other older, smaller, yeah, that's a perfect example. Look, I mean, there's the boat, you can see the bow, I, and there is the water's edge. So the potential here for not just the rainfall flooding, but unfortunately the uh, surge could prove to what we saw in the islands through Puerto Rico, through um, St. Croix, St. Thomas, and what was that two years ago During when Irma. that? During Irma, yeah. yeah. And, and Nassau is not even going to get the worst of it. Abaco is. Yeah, the Abaco is for today at a Category 5, I mean, and that's happening even as we speak. We'll continue to spread. And then later in today, when uh, we're doing the handoff here to uh, Mark as he comes in at 2 o'clock, uh, it'll be getting into then Nassau, then the Big Island, and eventually getting into the northern tip. And then it hits the shelf here, and this is where uh, things even change that much more because you go from really deep water to getting into some shallows pretty quickly, and that could help to um, create more of those. Now you got the rolling type of surge waves that are going to come through in the shallows or the flats as they are in and around some of these areas. Yeah, what, what you can't see there is the camera continues to pan. As you get to the tip of the island, Paradise Island there, it's where the lighthouse is, but then over to the left is where the cruise ships come in, and there's a whole bunch of new construction that's over there too, and that could stand to be obliterated because you know the construction itself isn't very secure right now. No, and so I'm waiting to see if we're going to go as far over toward the, um, to the lighthouse here. But, I, you know, when you look at, so this is a little strip of buildings that comes through here. We're still, this is getting out more toward where it's old, um, it's almost like wilderness here for the island, tropical type wilderness for the islands. But you can see just how shallow it gets and then you're back yeah, out to the uh, estuaries lighthouse. and bays. 20 feet of water standing on top of what's already a normal high tide for this area underneath just a, a hammering of, um, rainfall and you guys mentioned some new construction. I'm trying to see if the, it, I thought those were shingles. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's over. I, I was just there not too long ago. There's a uh, actually the Chinese are building a whole bunch of new apartments and hotels just right. to the left of that area that you're seeing. So and a new yeah. resort. I know they've built out there yeah. too. All right, Rachel, keep Thank us you, certainly Richard. on top of that. So, uh, you know, the, the news for us is that what happens after the next 24 to 36 hours, hopefully it makes that turn. So new this morning, this is phenomenal. These are pictures inside Dorian. These were taken by hurricane hunters from the Kessler Air Force Base in Mississippi. And by the way, a little bit of history was made. And Rich, I'm sure you know a little bit something about this. For the first time, there were three women who flew the hurricane hunter into the storm. So history made when it comes to tracking Dorian and the people who were aboard that hurricane hunter airplane. Do you see anything interesting there that uh, piques your curiosity? I, I seriously, when I look at it, you know, um, I, I think that the folks that do that are among the bravest of the brave yeah. um, to, to get into an airplane, whether it's a, a prop plane or, or a jet plane, and fly into something so ferocious. And you look at those pictures, you've been in a small plane before, little Cessnas or whatnot, and you hit even just a, a fair weather cloud, and they're bumpy. So bumpy. I mean, just imagine <laughs> that ride, and for the duration of, what, 12 hours sometimes, 12 to 16 when they're out? That's right. a long day to... Save, save for when you get into the eye of the storm, and then there's this unbelievable calm for yeah. a few minutes. And, and, and well, so that was the report I was looking at was as they were dropping some of the radio sounds and we get those updates and I saw that one drop in barometric pressure and that set up where we are now and it's a category five. Category five. Thanks so much, Richard. Well, as the forecast continues to shift for Dorian, so do emergency plans. Here in Jacksonville, Mayor Curry is expected to announce later today whether there will be any evacuations. We also expect to find out if Duval County Public Schools will be open or closed Tuesday since they could be used as storm shelters. They would need to get them ready. As soon as we get that information, we'll bring those announcements to you on air and on newsforjax.com. We do know, however, there will be some school closures in the area. Alachua, Baker, Bradford, Columbia, Union, and Flagler counties here in Northeast Florida. 
No school bell ringing on Tuesday, depending what the storm's going to do. Don't know about Wednesday yet. Flagler County Schools also going to be closed and at the college level. Yeah, UNF, Jacksonville University and the University of Florida, they are closed through at least Tuesday. Flagler College is closed through Wednesday. You can find a full list of closures on our website, newsforjax.com. And here's a quick look at how the state is getting ready for Dorian. Governor DeSantis has authorized the activation of 2,500 Florida National Guard members. 1,400 state troopers have been activated for 12-hour shifts. They've got 20 urban search and rescue teams on standby, along with more than 1,000 state law enforcement officers. The state also has nearly a million gallons of water and nearly 2 million meals ready to go. Go. If I'm not mistaken, the governor is going to hold a news conference. Milton, what is it, 1.30 this afternoon in Tallahassee? I think that's the time frame for it. We'll double check that for you. Yep, 1.30 this afternoon in Tallahassee. Have that for you as well uh, on newsforjacks.com. Right now, there are almost 28,000 linemen, tree crews, and support personnel staged around the state to help quickly restore power. Today, JEA plans to stage its crews at the Morocco Shrine Auditorium, another location out west. I know FPL has crews that staged in Daytona. Uh, Duke Energy, as well as some of the other out-of-state companies, are also positioned around the state. They're ready to go in a variety of directions, depending where the most widespread outages happen to be. Out in Lake City at the fairgrounds in Columbia County, there are hundreds of trucks there as well. They're ready to go when they get the word. Florida Power & Light serves 100 million people. They had to restore power to more than 4 million customers after Hurricane Irma two years ago. And restoration to all but the most damaged areas did take about 10 days. So keep that in mind when you're planning your hurricane kit. We're monitoring conditions on our coast as well. As you know, Jacksonville Beach is still in the projected cone. As we know, Jack's Beach was hit hard almost three years ago during Hurricane Matthew. They haven't started rebuilding the pier yet. That's meant to begin, I think, in 2021, something like that, when they get the money together. And people along Jack's Beach, they're getting ready for Dorian as it moves closer to the Florida coast. Potential for flooding, beach erosion. News for Jack's out there on the beach right morning. Zach, what are the conditions right, like right now? On the outside. Good morning, Bruce. Yeah, it's been really busy out here this morning. You know, you talk about that damage to the Jacksonville Beach Pier back during Hurricane Matthew in 2016. Some of that damage is still visible. This gate prevents people going beyond this area on the pier, but you can see boards are missing. Some boards have been turned up and the pier is still virtually damaged years later and the hope is that that does not happen again but like I said extremely busy out here people fishing people are in the water we've been talking with folks all morning long one mom we've been speaking with Patty she's from Atlantic Beach she's out here cheering her son on Sean Patrick who is in a surfing class he's out there with his coach and other peers his age enjoying some big waves Come on, <laughs> there she is. Patty, are you at all concerned with the posted red flag this morning? No, not at all. They do that more for um, people that are swimming and aren't like experienced with being in the ocean. As little as they are, these kids have learned from the time they touched a board to one, not lose their board. So if they <laughs> fall off, their board is right with them. That's kind of their lifeline, and that's what I've taught him his whole life. Um, we should mention Sean Patrick is 10. <laughs> yes. And how long has he been surfing for? This has been his year of getting serious about it. He kind of has been on a surfboard his whole life, just his older siblings surf, and we've been at the ocean forever. But he, um, this year he decided he really wants to surf, so he's surfing with Coach Moats, and he's become a whole new surfer this year. I was talking to his coach before he went out, and I asked his coach if he was nervous to bring his students out here, and he said, absolutely not. These are the conditions to teach in for them to really, truly get a hands-on education. Absolutely. This, these are waves that we don't get to see here. You know, to these little guys, this is almost like double overhead, whereas to the, you know, the bigger surfers, it's, a, it's beautiful for them, but for these kids, it's like the Mavericks. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's awesome for them to have this opportunity. We should mention this is not your first hurricane, not your first rodeo. Definitely not. Definitely not. We've been in Florida for nine years. We moved here right, I think it was Charlie, and we lived down south right when that hit. So we got very quick trial by fire. In Atlantic Beach, are you preparing? Are your neighbors preparing sandbags, boarding up, anything like that? Not at all. No, not at all. Yeah, no, we kind of were used to the media hype that literally started a week ago. And I feel like by the time 
the storm hits us, it's gonna you know make its turn back out east and just give us nice waves. <laughs> well, thank you very much for yeah. taking the time. I know you're busy you're snapping welcome. some photos of Sean Patrick. We're gonna root him on from the pier. Come on, buddy! <laughs> SP, take the next! Well, there you go. And for now, we're going to send it back to the studio where Bruce and Stacy are. The way, just in case you're not familiar, a red flag warning means that the surf is high, there are dangerous currents, or both, though you can swim. It means if you're not an experienced swimmer, yes. you should probably stay out of the water. If it becomes a double red flag warning, it means do not venture out into the ocean. But it looked beautiful out there. I mean, <laughs> it does look good. I mean, beautiful it does clouds, look good. great you know, sunshine. Blue sky, yeah. <laughs> Covering St. John's County, people living along the coast are worried about a repeat of Hurricane Matthew. A number of homes had to be rebuilt after they were ruined by flooding. Years of back-to-back -back hurricanes have caused a lot of erosion. Rip currents, a more immediate danger because this storm comes on a long holiday weekend. It sure does. News for Jack's reporter Brittany Muller joins us live from B Volano Beach. You're seeing a lot of people going in the water, and I don't know exactly where you are, but if you go one way uh, up or down, you probably see a lot of erosion or even damaged homes left over from previous hurricanes. Yeah, you see a lot of erosion and a lot of houses that are boarded up, but we're here on Volano Beach and we're seeing, you know, a lot of surfers are coming out because winds are picking up and so is the surf. And joining me live right now are Adam and Logan. They're out here. They came from Julington Creek and they're out here because the waves are picking up. That's right, huh? That's right. And so tell me, you're experienced in surfing right before the hurricanes, right? Yep, before and after. And what's that like for you? You know, the winds are intensifying and you're coming out here. Does that pose a risk for surfers? Yeah, definitely. You want to get it on it before it gets too rough and, you know, time it so that you get the best conditions without being too, too dangerous. Tell me about the conditions today. What was it like surfing this morning? Uh, it's pretty rough. The wind's on shore and the swell's coming up, you know, pretty fast. It's gotten bigger in the past couple hours since we've, we've been here, but, you know, it's not, not too bad right yet. And we're seeing more surfers come out here, a few dozen. I mean, you know, it's as the winds are intensifying, so does the chance for rip currents. I mean, have you ever been stuck in one? How old are you? I'm 13. You're so brave for being out here. Do you have that experience? How long have you been surfing? Like probably five years, but it's not too long. I'm not too experienced because he used to help me a lot. And I'm now just starting to do it by myself, so. And you have to be very careful just being out here with your son. I mean, it can be very dangerous and we're seeing that more so now. Surfers are out here. More are continually to come out here as the waves pick up. And you know, we did speak with Jack's Beach Surf, Sur Search and Rescue yesterday and they're saying now is not the time to come out, prove your skills or even learn how to surf. They're saying experienced surfers are coming out, but still be very careful as the surf is picking up. Reporting live from St. John's County, Brittany Muller, Channel 4, the local station. Yeah, and always go out with a buddy, too. You know, make sure that you've got somebody with you. Like your dad. <laughs> like that <you're> <laughs> my, da dad. my dad wouldn't Not help me. Dad, weather yeah. Authority is <laughs> always tracking the tropics. Download our free Weather Authority app and our free Hurricane app to stay up to date when a system develops and to see whether it's headed our way. Also, live interactive radar. We will be right back.